Hello everyone, this is Ray Kelly with Miniman Empire Automation Systems. In this video, we're gonna talk about the Agpo 60 hardware breakdown. So we have various components. We wanna talk more specifically about what we're looking at. Over here is the Agpo 60 controller that has a power cable here that's supplying power to this PC. This is an IP65 device, so it is field mountable. It does not need to go into enclosure. Here is an ethernet port where if you wanted to do some programming through this device, this port here, and then these two connections are for power link. So if you had to daisy chain multiple 60 controllers together, you can actually put them in series with these ports here. On top is an HDMI cable that kind of comes out there and down underneath. And this is doing the communication for these segments. From there, then it's another cable and for power and communication going from each segment underneath as a data chain. Over here with this power link cable, we end up on the X20 PLC head. And this is sort of dictating the controls of this. Right next to that power link, you see is the ethernet cable that is sending information back and forth to the BNR HMI. Uh, this purple cable here is the power cable for 24 volts for both the X20 PLC and the BNR HMI. And this empty spot here is for a field bus card. So if you had a line controller from Allen Bradley or Siemens or some other brand, you would put a field bus adapter here that could talk Ethernet IP, Profinet, CC Link, DeviceNet, it goes on and on. Um, so feel free to visit the BNR website to find out all the available adapters that are available. Uh, there's even an IO card here and we can keep expanding that if necessary. Moving down to the shuttles and segments, We'll see here, we have right now two shuttles. And actually I'm gonna turn off the power off of this unit. That allows me to kind of grab this. So here is the shuttle. We have the 120 by 120 by 10 millimeter thick shuttle in our demonstration today. Uh, you can kind of see here, there's some small holes for mounting and for dial pins for alignment along with a concentric bore. Uh, there's a currently a 3D printed uh, fixture for the previous demo we did. This is really nice. There's no onboard electronics. There's nothing on here like RFIDs or barcodes. We're able to uniquely identify the shuttle by keeping track of them as they move through the system. There's no mechanical guides. It's maintenance free. There's no wear items. There's no homing needed. So it's really nice ease of use technology in regarding of tracking and moving these shuttles around. They are available in different sizes. So I said this earlier, this is 120 by 120 and can handle up to 0.6 kilograms, but we can go very, very large and handle up to 14.4 kilograms. And you can mix and match them. So just because your system currently has, you know, two 120s, we can still mix in there a 220 and kind of control them. So if your process dictates that you have small shuttles for certain components and larger pallets for larger components, we can mix and match them. We're gonna take a second here to rearrange and cut away. We're gonna look more at the segments from a different angle. We'll be right back. And we're back. So here we have the segments isolated from the rest of the demo. You'll see that there's two segments measuring about 20 by 10 inches. So this is 240 by 240 millimeters, which is that 10 by 10, which gives that 20 by 10 pattern. Uh, they're about 70 millimeters tall in this dimension. You'll notice there's a seam right here that's always going to be there. If your application was extremely hygienic or you wanted a more clean look, you can put a skin over this of stainless steel or anything non-ferrous that will help kind of cover all that and eliminate those seams, making this thing a very nice clean design. I'm gonna have Steve step in here to help me rotate this down. The system is really, very really dense, which is why I needed Steve's help to rotate that. Some copper and electronic components on the bottom makes this a very solid unit. You also see some cables here, there's two of them, one being this communication cable and the other being this power cable. So this sort of daisy chain design makes it a pretty clean installation in regards of making a very really large scalable system. You'll see here some additional ports that allow me to connect other segments in other directions and additional ports for power. And these two sets of orange ports, if you can see them real quick there, are for cooling purposes. You can cool with air or liquid and that will help pull some of that heat that is generated out of the system if necessary. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Miniman Empire Automation Systems.